Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 5. New information tonight about what happened at a motel standoff in West Fargo on Friday. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Newly uncovered court documents outline shots were fired at officers with one flying just over an officer's head. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop joins us live with what else the documents say. Ashley? In the search warrant filed, police responded to the call after someone saw girls crying and 37-year-old Jan Michael Wangstead holding a gun in the room at the roadway inn. Wangstead faces six felony charges, including attempted murder. Documents show that Wangstead shot at officers as they entered the hotel room. The officer drew his gun but did not shoot back because there was a man sitting between him and Wangstead. The documents show that the officers did retreat and Wangstead fired again, hitting the sprinkler system. The SWAT team and robots entered the building and officers began to negotiate with Wangstead. He told officers he was just angry and just wanted to get high, but one of the girls in the room with him hid his drugs. He told police that he had a grenade and would kill anyone that came close to him. Eventually, Wangstead surrendered. An evidence list shows that officers found a 9mm handgun, a box of bullets and magazines, uh, alone with pills and baggie of a crystal substance and other drug paraphernalia. Andrea? All right, thank you, Ashley. Wangstead's criminal history shows multiple felony convictions in Minnesota, including drug possession, burglary, criminal sexual conduct, and simple robbery. Wangstead could face a maximum of 20 years in prison for attempted murder if convicted. Three people have overdosed on heroin this week in Moorhead alone, according to police. One of them, a 20-year-old Moorhead man, was found by family members and died after Narcan was unsuccessful. Ahmed Gardi graduated from Moorhead High School, and friends say he was a funny guy, and his addiction took control of him. You just don't ever think it happens to anyone that you love. He's a brother, best friend, like, he's not any trouble. He's just, he just needed help. And we'll have much more on this story on Valley News Live at 6. It was just a fraction of a second that saved an East Grand Forks man from being killed in a suicide by cop incident. Richard Hagen is in jail facing a felony charge of reckless discharge of a firearm. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us what led to some scary moments for everyone involved. East Grand Forks police were called to 1026 12th Avenue Southeast at midnight Saturday. According to court records, Richard Hagen had been drinking and arguing with his wife. Yep. Very uh, tense moments okay. when they, you know, when you arrive to a home and hear gunshots. Yeah. Yeah, very tense. As police walked up to the home, they heard a gunshot. They entered the house and ordered two people who were in the living room out of the home. Then they called for Richard Hagen to come out of a back bedroom. Police say Hagen came out of the bedroom carrying a 22 pistol in his right hand. Police repeatedly told Hagen to throw down his weapon. One officer reported he was just starting to squeeze the trigger on his weapon when Hagen threw down his gun. I think it's obvious if he would have pointed the gun at the officers, he more than likely would have been shot. Yeah. But I mean, it worked out, I guess, the best possible way it could have for everyone involved. No one was hurt. After throwing down his gun and narrowly escaping being shot, Hagen continued to scream, shoot me, and would not cooperate with officers until they got him under control with handcuffs. Hagen remains in the Polk County Jail. It will be up to a judge to determine if Hagen will be allowed to still possess a firearm. In East Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Hagen remains in jail on a bond of $80,000 cash. His next court appearance is scheduled for tomorrow. If convicted, he faces a maximum sentence of two years in prison. We're enjoying the quiet and above average weather in this area. Hutch, is there anything happening tonight that we need to be aware of? Well, in our neck of the woods, things remain on the quiet side. We've even seen a little bit of sun and temperatures cooler than yesterday, but still above average for this time of the year. Take a look at the major storm system exiting the Rocky Mountains, heading into the Central Plains, delivering a 20-inch punch of snow to the Denver area. Already reports in a few locations in southern Minnesota of 7 inches. The southern reaches of the Twin Cities are getting hit pretty good with some heavy snow. That will continue. We're milder here. 44, Fargo, 40, Jamestown, 
35 Devil's Lake and a look at your planner for tonight shows temperatures slipping into the 30s. That northeast wind will remain persistent. Coming up, it does look like I have some milder weather to tell you about. A chance of rain and a chance of snow as well. I'll spill all the beans here in just, just a few minutes. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Hutch. Should college students be allowed to carry handguns around campus and store them in their dormitories? Several states and universities in the U.S. say yes. And it's on the minds of people here after recent publications in the NDSU student newspaper. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric asked around campus if students feel they should be allowed to carry. According to the National Conference of State Legislatures, 33 states have introduced legislation governing concealed carry on college campuses. And Texas is the latest to allow it. But North Dakota is one of 19 states banning campus carry. I don't see that immediate response being to allow students to carry weapons, but I think it would be fair to look into it. NDSU says two policies govern weapons. The Student Code of Conduct outlines what weapons are prohibited and says university police, quote, provides limited temporary storage space for firearms used in hunting and other shooting sports. The NDSU policy manual also shows what's not allowed. First thought is I wouldn't really feel comfortable with it, but I haven't looked into it. That's where comes into play you got to make your own decisions you know you know where to draw the line alex carlson says he supports campus care saying if you got to do it do it with the second men amendment being a an amendment itself and with these school shootings that have happened further south and along in in the country it makes sense sam wallace says college students are adults in the eyes of the law so it makes sense they should be allowed to carry not to say there isn't more opposition, but only one student I talked with said he opposed the idea. Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Minnesota is one of 23 states that allows each college or university to make the decision to permit or deny carrying concealed weapons. To get a look at what is and isn't allowed on campus, click on this story at valleynewslive.com. An assistant professor from Valley City State University is in jail, arrested for unauthorized use of personal information and possession of stolen property. Longman Ram Lau is a member of the VCSU Social Science Department. Investigators found over 200 credit and gift cards with various names in his apartment. They also searched his office and found more credit and gift cards. They seized financial paperwork, computers, and electronic storage devices that may have been used by Lau to counterfeit the cards. Lau may face additional charges. The community came together in a big way to help the family of fallen Fargo police officer Jason Mosier. The Fargo force said today nearly $26,000 was raised during the Heroes Are Never Forgotten game on March 11th. It was the largest crowd so far for the force this season and the largest amount raised and donated for a benefit game in franchise history. Area golfers who are eager to get in the swing of things will soon be swinging their clubs at Fargo Public Courses. Mark your calendars because weather permitting, the Fargo Park District will open driving ranges at Osgood, Edgewood and Rose Creek Public Golf Courses next Tuesday, March 29th at 10 in the morning. And then on Monday, April 4th, those locations with the addition of Prairie Wood will open their courses to the public. The newly remodeled El Zagel course will reopen later this season. Kids around the valley have some days off of school for either spring break or Easter, so we have some ideas on how to keep them busy. Many places like zoos, museums, and libraries have extended hours. It could be a good time to tackle that Pinterest project on your board or let kids do crafts at home. Some places encourage learning through play, like the Inspire Innovation Lab, where kids get to do experiments and activities that challenge their brains. And really what they're learning is collaboration and creativity, critical thinking, um, they learn time management, they learn all these other skills that are needed in today's world. Another idea is to volunteer at a local nonprofit with your kids. We have more ideas online at valleynewslive.com. Just look under the Valley Today tab. And remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day.